Blaise Pascal, the reason we're talking about Pascal, another French voice, it's interesting because on the one hand you could question, is he really a philosopher? And we'll take up that debate in a moment. But we include him simply because he has different ideas that were influential and because he was critiquing Descartes. So he made it his business to critique what we just heard. So let's at least hear him out, regardless of whether we're going to call him a philosopher or a theologian or an apologist, etc. So Pascal lived then from 1623 to 1662. So we can compare that then to Descartes' life and see how it was that he was born somewhat later, about 27 years later. Might be classified as a Christian apologist, one who tried to defend the faith. Since he was, concerned, he was more concerned with showing how Christian revelation, the Christian religion, the Catholic Church, resolves many of our problems that we have as humans. And so he derided useless and uncertain Descartes. Ouch! You can imagine the fight that they got into. He instead advocated for experience and experimental method being our guide. How interesting, right? Rather than relying on reason, there's also something to be said for experience. He said, authority is the source of theological knowledge, since the mysteries of faith surpass human reason. Ooh, think about that for a moment. So when it comes to things of faith, then we have to rely on certain authorities. Spoken like a good Catholic, right? When it comes to matters of faith, we have, to, we have to think about the authorities, because the mysteries of faith are bigger than human reason, and Descartes can't get to those sorts of things. He says, the secrets of nature are hidden from us, but experience and experiment increase our knowledge of those secrets of, na of nature. So, again, through our experience, we come to learn about nature. He says, Experiences are the sole principles of physics, and our knowledge is limited by our experience. The only knowledge that I have has come to me from my experiences. If I was born in a different time, in a different place, in a different era, I would have had different experience and different knowledge. Who I am is a result of my knowledge, which comes from my experience. Pascal said, if God has no parts or limits, ooh, think about this for a moment, if God is a spirit, then God has no relation to us. And so we can't know God by reason, Descartes, you, mean you can know God? Wait a minute, if God is a spirit, then the only way can we, know, we can know God is through revelation and through faith, spoken like a good Christian or Catholic. Blaise Pascal said, I cannot forgive Descartes. He would have liked to have been able to bypass God in the whole of his philosophy, but he could not help making God give a shove to set the world in motion, and after that, he has no more to do with God. Who is Descartes' God, he said? Descartes, Descartes' God made us, but then after that, once you make the clock and wind it up, what more is there to do? You just let the clock... Go. Is it fair? Is that fair? Uh, reading Descartes in that way, I don't think it's totally fair. Only because Descartes was saying it's not just about God making me in the past. This thing that created the eye, it's not just in the past. It's in the present. Could I make myself as I am today? Could I give myself toes or fingers? No. Something is causing me to do what I'm doing today. And so Blaise Pascal said, "Who? How's that?" this for a quote. Philosophy isn't worth an hour's labor. It's not even worth an hour of your time to study philosophy. Those of you who came here for three hours this evening, got news for you. All of philosophy is not even worth an hour of your time. And he said, to mock at philosophy is to philosophize truly, simply meaning the job of philosophy is to critique philosophy. The job of the philosopher is to critique what other philosophers have said. And then to critique what you said as a philosopher. That's the job of philosophy, is to critique philosophy. Pascal said, reason alone is unable to establish who we are. We need the Christian religion to tell us who we are. Without the Christian religion, we are incomprehensible to ourselves. 
our nature as human beings, our destiny as human beings, where we're going, all that is discovered only through faith. We've got news for you, Muslims, Jews, Sikhs, Buddhists, Hindus, it's the Christian faith that reveals who we are and what our destiny is. Though we are wretched, he said, we are also great. Think about that for a moment. He was very much influenced by these Protestant, the Jansenists, who believe that we are, to use Martin Luther's world, we are a pile of feces. I mean, we are just, we are that wretched and disgusting. Fortunately, God comes like the snow covering us, right, with God's grace. But, he's, but he believed this, that we are wretched, but at the same time, we're wretched, but we're also great. Because our wretchedness tells us who we are. Who can be unhappy at not being king, except for a deposed king? We're like, we used to be kings, I think before the fall, before the first sin, if you subscribe to that, right? We used to be like that, and now here we are, we're like the fallen monarchs. Our excess, our excesses, reveal our craving for the infinite. There's this hunger within us, this God-sized hole in our heart. Later theologians, Carl Reiner would call it the, the kapax infiniti, or the kapax they. We have this capacity for the divine within us. As I say, we have a God-shaped, a God-sized hole in our heart. What can fill that God-sized hole in your heart? Only God. You can try to fill it with food or money or video games or all sorts of other things. Got news for you. That God-sized hole in your heart, that kapax day, kapax infinity, that capacity for God will only be filled by God. St. Augustine said, Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. It was Blaise Pascal who said, in all male-inclusive language, which is why we've translated here. He said, man is only a reed, but we'll translate it differently. The human person is only a reed, a piece of grass blowing in the wind, right? That's what a reed is. Mm -hmm. A human being is simply a reed, the frailest thing in nature, but it is a thinking reed. Think about that for a moment. You're like a blade of grass, but you know what? You are a thinking blade of grass. He says, the human person is a thinking reed. It is not required that the whole universe should arm itself to crush it. A breath of wind, a drop of water is enough to destroy the human person. Every one of the seven billion people on this planet will die, will be crushed by this universe. But I got news for you, said Blaise Pascal. Were the universe to crush us, we would still be nobler than that which slays us. For we know that we die and that the universe has the better of us, but the universe knows nothing of it. We are thinking reeds. We are thinking blades of grass who, even though the universe can destroy us, I know that I die. And that chair, that table, that wave, that mountain, that star cannot say the same. So Blaise Pascal said, spatially, the universe encompasses and engulfs me like a point. This expansive universe, which is absolutely huge beyond huge, even though I am so finite in compared to all of that, by thought, I encompass the universe. I seem like such a small point, such a small dot in that, in that huge universe. But you know what? That universe is all within me. I encompass it. He said, we are filled with an insatiable desire for happiness, an unsatisfiable desire for happiness, and this desire is the source of unhappiness. We desire things, and that makes us unhappy. The only, the only thing that can fill us is that infinite and changeless object, which is God. We have a kapax day, a kapax infinity, a capacity for God, or capacity for the infinite that won't be satisfied by anything except God or the infinite. And so our wretchedness reveals our greatness, our capacity for God. The last thing to be, to, to be able to say about Pascal, so Pascal had what we refer to as Pascal's wager. This is the question for you, my atheist friend. Do you, believe, do you choose to believe in God or not? Because by not believing in God, I just want to say, for the record, you are taking a risk. 
Because if you don't believe in God, and God exists, got bad news for you. If you do believe in God, and God doesn't exist, nothing happens. You're not out of anything. Probably. So Pascal's wager then is that there are some people who are convinced by the truths of the Christian religion, others who are skeptics and atheists, whose side you're going to be on. You're going to be with the Christians who believe in their God? You're going to be with skeptics and atheists who don't need a God. He said, belief is the most reasonable course of action. Why? Because it's to our advantage and our happiness. Better to believe than not to believe. Why would you not believe? Why would you say that you're an atheist, said Pascal? Consider where your interests lie, he said. There's no harm in choosing one path over the other. It's advantageous and therefore reasonable to wager for God. If you say that you believe in God... And if you win, you win everything. If you say you don't believe in God, if you lose, whereas if God doesn't exist, what do you mean? Better to wager, to take that risk of believing in God than to stand up and say, I don't believe in God. Oh, you fool. Can I tell my wager story? Pascal was a mathematician, and that was my part of the he actually worked out a formula for the wager, and we have copies of it, how he wrote different numbers and things like that to prove the wager. My niece is a doctorate or working on a doctorate in math, and she tried to work it out and couldn't work it. <laughs> but we actually have his mathematical formula for the wager. So what we did was in philosophy, because math is certain, we tried to use math, we tried to take every philosophical idea or concept and to express it in math, right? B squared, uh, you know, work all this out with letters and numbers. And how interesting that, uh, but in the end, when it comes to Pascal's wager, the question is, which side are you on? The side of the Christians, the side of the atheists? Oh boy, that's a tough one, but I just, I don't see what, what I can win by being on the side of the atheists. <laughs> you gotta go with the Christians. Even if I'm wrong, eh, what do I lose? 